We're going to take this idea, we're going to apply it onto how to add and subtract. Because right now, we're, we're probably pretty good at finding LCD. Done a lot of that. We're pretty good at finding equivalent expressions. Done a lot of that now. We're going to combine those ideas with addition and subtraction and see that we can add and subtract some fractions that don't automatically have common denominators given to us. So let's look at how to do that. We're going to add and we're going to subtract some fractions. That don't initially have common denominators. You know, when I first introduced the concept of adding fractions, we had a pizza party. You guys remember the pizza party, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, did you buy your pumpkins yet? And, uh, yeah. Did you really? Yeah, I bought my pedometer. Oh, I, I carved a black shit and carved a pumpkin. I just watched someone carve pumpkins. That's pretty much the same thing uh, the other day. It was kind of fun. Maybe we'll carve one one day. It's a huge pumpkin. The Merced College had actually a, a pumpkin patch thing. Pretty big pumpkins. Anyway, moving on. Um, if we did a pizza party, and I said, if you, if you had a pizza, and it sliced up into eight slices, and you had three slices here and two slices here, together you had five out of eight slices. If we try to do the same idea here, you'd have a pizza, let's cut into how many slices here? Six. This one? Four. Four. And this pizza would be cut into six slices. Here's the question. Say you're really hungry one day, or these are mini pizzas. Yeah, they're pretty small. And you eat three of these slices and one of these slices. How much pizza have you had? Have you had four slices? Yes. Yes, you've had four slices. However, you're talking about different sized pieces, aren't you? Yeah. <clears throat> these four pieces are bigger than these six pieces. So if I'm ta talking about adding these, this pizza together, I can't say I had four out of four. I didn't. Because this piece wouldn't fill up that piece. Does that make sense? Yeah. I can't say I've had four out of six. Because these pieces are bigger than these six pieces over here. I can't do that unless I convert this to the same number of slices. And here's how you do that. The pic pictorially, like as a picture, what you would do is cut these pizzas again to make sure they had the same number of slices. In our case, that's probably going to be 12 if you look for LCD. So I'd go, okay, here's four. I want to make more slices here. Here's six. I want to make more slices here. So everywhere I would cut this. So it has 12 slices. Here, I'd have to cut a little bit more. Now, if I filled this in, that was this whole region, and that was these two regions now. Do you see the difference in the picture? Can you see how now I could add up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 out of the 12, and 2 out of the 12. If we have 12 slices now, I can directly add those pieces together. Are you with me on this? The 9 12 plus the 2, that should be, what was that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We should have 11 out of 12 slices on this when we're all said and done with this problem. That's how, as a picture, we can represent adding these fractions together. You just have to make new slices. Now, the new slices, that's the idea of finding a common denominator. And that's why we have to use what we just learned in order to do this problem. Did the picture thing make sense to you? Good, OK. You guys are tired today. Don't give me the shoes, it's Monday. I'm here too. Come on. I had a weekend, just like everyone else. I just drink more coffee than you. Perhaps. 
Here's the way we're going to go ahead and add these fractions. The first thing we need to do is find our LCD just like we did with the problems that were on the board earlier. So with our LCD, we're going to still start with the larger denominator. In this case, what's the larger denominator, folks? Six. The larger yeah. denominator is six. So we're going to find that six and start taking multiples. The first multiple that four goes into, that's our LCD. So we start with six. Does four go into six? No. 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 Go to the next one. The next multiple of 6 is? 12. Does 4 go to 12? Yes. Write that down. I will most likely give you partial credit if you write down an LCD. That At least I know you know what you're doing. Okay. If you get the rest of the problem wrong, at least you get maybe one or two points on this one. You with me? So that's a good thing. Write that down. Now, what we do is we treat this problem like one of these problems I have on the board, one of the equivalent fractions. Here's what I mean by that. What we're trying to get to is 12, both here and here. So you ask yourself, what do I need to multiply by in order to get the 12? What number do I need to multiply 6 by in order to get the 12? Two. Now, the key about fractions is whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do the numerator. Otherwise, you change the value of it, and we can't have that. An equivalent fraction means a fraction has the same value. Different denominator, but the same value. So if I multiply the denominator by 2, what else do I have to multiply by 2? The 1. Good. Which is, what's that called? Yeah. Thank you. So if I multiply the 6 by the 2, I've got to multiply the 1 by the 2. Let's work on this fraction first. I know I'm going to have plus. What's this fraction going to give me? Two thirds. Okay. Hey, real quick. Um, am I going to try to simplify this stuff? Would that be a good idea? Not now. You know what I'm doing? I'm actually purposely unsimplifying. I know that seems weird. But I'm purposely making the fraction bigger than, than I, I should. Unsimplify it. Because that's the only way we can find a common denominator. So we're purposely unsimplifying the fraction. That's a weird idea, right? Purposely multiplying by a number to make it a little bit look a little bit bigger so that we can add it. So sure, I'm going to have 2 over 12. Whatever you multiply the denominator by, you must multiply the numerator by the same number. So you're looking here, you're trying to figure out how you're going to get 12. This makes 12, right? Oh, okay. But remember how on this on these problems over here, you, ought to, you multiplied by 7, and that's what you had to do to the top as well. Remember that? This dictated what you did up here. This told you what to do here. This is telling you what to do here. Okay, so if you multiply this by 2 to get the 12, you have to multiply this by 2. Necessarily, you have to do that. Now, why it works mathematically, can you all tell me, what is 2 over 2? How much does that equal? 1. Yeah, so really, you're multiplying by 1 in a really fancy way. That's what you're doing. It's not changing the value of the fraction. If you did this, would it, oops, that's supposed to be one. If you did that, would it change the value of your fraction? Yes. yes. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. You're multiplying by one half. You would have half the value of your fraction. You can't do that. Whatever you multiply the denominator by, got to do the same thing on that top. Okay? Are you okay with this first fraction off to the right? Yeah. Let's work on the next one. Now, again, we're still going to try to get 12 on the denominator. We want to fill out this part now. This is what you're doing. This looks exactly like that now. We're trying to fill out the 12. You just got to tell me what I need to multiply by Three. in order to get the 12. Three. Three. Just on the bottom, right? Both. Both. Oh, okay, both. Because technically, I'm multiplying by 1. I really am. I'm multiplying by 3 over 3. That makes a value of 1. So I'm not changing the value of the fraction. I'm just purposely unsimplifying it for a little bit. So if we have 3 over 3, can you tell me what does this fraction make? What over what? <coughs> Here's how you check your work to make sure you're doing it right. You should have your LCD in three spots. In a little bit, you're going to have it in four spots. You should have it up here. You should have it right here and right there. It should all be the same number. So 12, 12, 12, or whatever your LCD is. How many people feel okay with this so far? After that, well, this is like a, a problem we've just done in section 4.3. We know exactly how to do that. Next step would be we're going to write this as one fraction. Remember that when we add or subtract fractions, we don't add or subtract the denominators. It's still 12. On the numerator, we get 9 plus 2. We get 11 twelfths. 
Yes, no? So first step we're doing, we've got to find the LCD. Next thing we're doing is making equivalent fractions like we practiced. Then we can add and subtract like we've done before. <coughs> okay, I'm going to model one more for you. I'll give you a couple to do on your own. And I'll be walking around if you guys need help on this stuff. So first thing. What, will, what do we need to do? Can we add them the way this, this is? No. We certainly want to do 6 over 20, right? That's not going to be the right answer. We can't just add straight across. Multiply, sure, not add. First thing we do is what then? Okay. LC, LCD. LCD is the lowest common denominator or least common denominator? 15. We're going to start with the 15, sure. Does 5 go into 15? Yes. Hey, you're done. That's great. If 5 goes into that number, then that's automatically your LCD. Now let's start multiplying because we know we're going to have to find an equivalent fraction. Do we need to multiply the, this number by anything? No. If we did, I mean, look, what do you need to multiply by to get 15? Well, one. One. we already have 15. We're not going to multiply by 1. Yeah, I mean, that just gives you the same numbers over again. So on this side, we don't have to multiply anything. That's great. It's already done. On the left-hand side, though, we don't have 15 already. You need to tell me what I need to multiply by in order to get 15. On the bottom, on the top, or both? Both. Good. My left fraction, ladies and gentlemen. Six, six, six fifteenths. Four fifteenths we didn't have to change. We know how to add fractions. We don't add the denominators. We just add the numerators. And we're going to get how much? Fifteen. Am I going to leave it ten fifteenths? No. no. I don't do that. I'll mark you off for that. Because we should know how to simplify, right? Yeah. We're past that. So make sure you do simplify these things. We look for any common factors. We know that there's a common factor of what in 10 and 15? We'll divide 10 by 5 and get how much? 2 thirds. Good. Wait, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Too? I'm simplifying the fraction. I'm simplifying the fraction. So we need to know that this is, uh, this was one way I showed you how to do it. The other way was, the other way was, you think about what number goes into both. That number is 5. This is 5 times 2. This is 5 times 3. We cross out the 5s. So we get 2 thirds. Yeah, either way you want to show me at this point, I really don't care. Um, this way is the more mathematical way to do that. Okay, I'd like to try some on your own. Uh, let's do three of these things. And then we'll continue. Okay, I've put some variables on these problems, and I'm pretty sure you can handle that. Do the same method. <laughs> 